Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Old World Blues, the A to Z series, in which we're playing finally as the New California Republic. Um, it's obviously one of the major nations, biggest major nations in the mod, and it's actually been, I think at least at the time of this recording, a few years since I've actually played as them. So I'm kind of excited to come back to them. I don't, I think I played them once I got an update, but then I haven't touched them since then, so I'm not sure what's going to happen. Led by Aaron Kimball. I swear you are all stupid, really ridiculous. What do you mean you ran out of supplies again? A military man of the bone. The hero of the Mojave who brought Hoover Dam to the Republic has grasped the reins of the presidency. Whether he deserves the reins is another matter for debate entirely. As women, ghouls, and mutants can all attest to discrimination, and everyone can point to him for the rising of Brahmin barons. I see no problem with that. So we got a giant focus tree. Fantastic. Um, I'm just not sure which way we want to go, so I'm just going to play this by ear and say, whatever happens, happens. Uh, but a founding myth. When Vault 15 opened first in 2097, as dwellers emerged in a changed world, equipped as they were with a gift that set about founding city Shady Sands, a fledging settlement soon to become a beacon in the wasteland. Life wasn't easy, however, and then followed by President Tandy's legacy. While President Aradesh was instrumental in the foundation of this fair republic, President Tandy was without a doubt one of the most consequential figures in the post-war wasteland. Under her wise guidance, Shady Sands grew to new heights and the republic boomed in power and influence. Her thinking forever, Shape the future of the NCR in the Wasteland, Vault 13's hero. When Shady Sands was, was but a budding settlement, plagued by raiders and locked in a bitter struggle for survival, it was visited by a denizen of Vault 13. The only, only known as a Vault Dweller, he met with Eridesh, who shared their knowledge with him on his quest to replace Vault 13's fa faulty water chip. While the water chip from Vault 15, Shady Sands' home vault, was piled too far under rock for the Vault Dweller to, to recover, Eridesh's kindness made the Vault Dweller feel indebted to his, the struggling community. When disaster struck Shady Sands and the Khan Raiders captured Aradesh's daughter Tandi, Vault Dweller repaid his debt ten times over, freeing Tandi and driving the Khans from California for decades. Our running with the Vault Dweller's kindness and honor was a founding moment for the Republic, as without his bold assault on the Khans and freeing of Tandi, our fledging nation would never have taken off from the ground. Over the centuries after his visit, uh, the Vault Dweller's impact on Shady Sands would morph into the settlement's uh, founding myth. Society would be forever more, but what, what fundamental ideal? Debts must always be honored no matter the cost. Self-sacrifice is essential to help others. Ooh. Strangers must always be treated with kindness. Dude, the compliance goes up. I like that. She stands up, grew, revering a single figure long ago. You get some bonuses and some malices with each one here. Strangers must always be treated with kindness. We always repay our debts. Get more stability and growth is okay. I don't want to lose any manpower. I grew revering a single figure long ago. And then, time arose all beauty. Under Tandi, the Republic flourished. Under Tib Tibet, it stagnated. When Peterson took over the reins, the Republic began to creak under pressure, the apples of liberty. Over 30 years have passed since the heroes of the NCR broke the enclave forces at Navarro. And since then, the mighty pioneers have poured north to tame a savage land, under the guidance of the Brahmin barons and General Lee. Our people opened mines, scavenged towns, and built farms to feed a hungry Republic, but not all are happy with their manifest destinies of travels. Unwilling to adopt the NCR's enlightened guidance, but resist our efforts to civilize the frontier. Chief settlers from San Francisco refused to recognize the authority of Redding's Rangers, and some whispered the Brotherhood still has agents there working against the Republic. Tell will tell if any of these votes could threaten our march of liberty. For now, I'm just going to throw you over here, too. The Republic's Golden Years. For uh, over the 52 years President Tandy led the Republic, the Union of the Five States went from strength to strength. By focusing the Republic's economy and workforce on infrastructure, and agriculture, California, enjoyed a thriving network of trade routes and Brahmin farms. The clearing of roads, rivers, and railways paved the way for the rapid redeployment of the NCR's growing military, allowing the prompt response to threats across the Southern California and reaching north towards Reading. Backed by an abundance of renewable food thanks to the gap-created farmlands and Brahmin herds, the population of settlements, major and minor alike, exploded, further ballooned out by an influx of new settlers from across Northern California and beyond. Never afraid of using his underhanded tactics to achieve her goals, she bullied New Reno and Vault City into joining the Republic as autonomous territories and ordered the assault on Navarro that would shatter the enclave on the west coast. And Premiership, so abundant with successes and victories, Tiny's legacy has shaped every aspect of the NCR and the wider wasteland. One set of her policies saw success beyond comparison and helped the founding Shady Sand State grow beyond comparison. Nursing civilian industry, building forts in vital locations. It's not bad. Then railways across the wasteland. That's not bad either. Building something. That's actually probably the best one to do. But I'm kind of a sucker. We get four and one more infrastructure across the entire land. I kind of like that. Gets you more resources. It lets you travel a little faster. 
Does your build actually slightly faster too? Stagnation of the Zenith. Soon after President Tandy's passing in 2248, the New Republic, or New California Republic, reached its zenith. Under Tandy, shady sands spread from the Pacific to Reading, from the Boneyard to the gates of the Mojave. Even the Golden Circle's towns fell beneath the bear, as vault cities welcomed an NCR garrison and Reno became an associated state. At home, Tandy's fierce regulation against wealthy ranchers, the so-called Brahmin barons, and rich trading monopolies ensured prosperity and support for the Republic and revived dreams of a better world. Tandy's successor, Tibbet, continued the good times and, although, and all thought the Republic's good times would last forever. But the fate of the Republic changed forever in 2253, when a caravan of 38 NCR citizens journeyed from Arizona to Baker, which was attacked by raiders in the northern Mojave, at the time of desolate no man's land. President Tibbet, following Tandy's most mold of preferring diplomacy to brute force, was slow to react to the crisis. When Tibbet dithered, opportunistic senators smelled blood, most notably Wendell Peterson, who had demanded military assistance for the crisis. Peterson enchanted Tibbet with a promise of the buried clause. Peterson's inauguration showed the limits of the NCR's progress. Peterson allied himself with the Brahmin barons and relied on increasingly militaristic expansionist policies to win the support of the population. As the Brahmin barons rose and the vast expansion of the military continued, the NCR started a haphazard period of stagnation. Fueled by the baron and uh, caravanissary money, the Republic entered a harsh cycle of consumerism and corruption. Sure, the Republic thrived, but it was no longer ordinary people gaining most from the growth. By 2275, much of Northern California was run from writing by the barons themselves, benefiting from NCR protection while contributing little of their own. The Navarro territories, liberated, liberated with brother assistance, are a seething frontier. And the Mojave, well, as they say, the house always wins. The military complex groaned under Peterson's weight. See if 5% penalty. Ooh. Big business brought in money, but hurt her policies. Or politics. I don't hurt a political power game. Militaristic propaganda made the Republic cynical. I'll go with this one. The State of the Union. The NCR has faced many crises throughout the decades, but always always managed to weather many of things thrown at it relatively intact. The Republic is not as strong as it once was, however, and is relying ever more on aggressive military responses to most thorny issues. And democracy and despotism. Democracy in California has remained relatively stable since the conception of the Republic, but the NCR's democratic system is far from safe. Dirty money now clogs. The mechanisms of government and the direct, a lack of direct elections for president set the NCR's legitimacy. While democracy would survive most challenges at the moment, then 2278 elections still promises to be a pivotal moment for the NCR's future. And the crises in California. Life in the Wasteland isn't simple, especially now for a democracy as cumbersome and problem riddled as the NCR. After decades of decadent decline under the premiership of Peterson and Kimball, the Republic is facing a number of crises on many fronts. In the South, Daglo faces off with raider groups along the Colorado and in Baja who threaten the blooming city security and prosper. The brother looked in its bunkers, and whether they will be friend or foes too soon to tell, San Francisco, nominally a friend of the Republic, pursues its own designs under the Xi. The Barons continue to run roughshod over the people of Northern California. With the NCR distracted, Vault City and Navarro debate their own course. Between now and the 2278 election, the NCR will face a number of crises that it must react to. When these arise, they will be put to the Senate. Who prevails will decide the fate of the election of 2278. Democracy must prevail, but we'll see. The Northern Frontier. While the Northern Frontier is active, neither the NCR nor the Sheik can revoke their mutual non-aggression pact. Navarro is the last frontier in California. To the inhabitants, it's a homeland that the NCR merchants and settlers are trespassing on. To the Sheik, it's a new source of food and number. And to the NCR, it's one of the many lands to be tamed by the bear. Somewhere that the NCR may have been off more than it can chew and tensions are reaching a boiling point. But even the Sheik agree that so long as the NCR comports itself with justice and humility, progress will come to Navarro. The 2278 Senate Election. The NCR may be a bit different from what you're used to. There are no chieftains, town bosses, kings, or even dictators here. Our leaders are elected by the people, that's right. Every state has a right to send representatives to the Hall of Congress. These representatives select the president and vice president to head the council, and it is their advice which guides the president's decisions. The Senate election of 2078 will decide, ultimately, who becomes the next president. President Kimball is likely to remain in office, but he faces opposition at home. My allegiance is to the republic, to democracy. By the people, for the people, of the people. The followers are fierce opponents of Kimball, and are backed by Governor Algon Murphy. As he once put in the speech earning his name, we must be thankful that we have no ills at home and we can afford another war. There is no crime in the Republic, there is no want in the Republic. There is no children in need of schools, no sick in need of care. There are no farmers who need assistance, no neighbors who need a hand. To spend as much blood and treasure as we have, all must be good. One of Kimball's other critics is Mayor Hayes of Daglo. Mocked for his old world blues, Hayes studied America's past, the days of when a nation stretched from sea to shining sea, with influence extending from people pole to frozen pole. Hayes opposes the war in the Mojave because the resources spent there should be spent to uplift the Republic. Indeed, Hayes is perhaps the only NCR politician who does not respect House, but admires him. So better than worshipping the Maxon dynasty. Refurbishing the Bazaar. The Bazaar has been the heart of the shady sands since its founding. What greater way to showcase the prosperity and power of the Republic than turning into a veritable shopping mall? Yay. Um, I want more political power. 
Oh, the friendly lending company. Ooh, that's not bad. But I was like going for this one. But power, stability, all the good stuff. Um, it's not falling into chaos. Arms workshops would be nice. Power would be nice. Um, selection of 2075. Fall Cities Council is choosing a new leader. A diplomatic visit to the promote ties will help remain or mind the fair city where their best interests lie. I have a feeling we get this free anyways, but we're going to do it. Whatever. Get it done early and fast. That will be good and nice. Is there any other focus I can choose right now? Oh. The bears roar. Long gone are the days when the NCR's arm was nothing better than tiny militias with few to no guns. A large nation needs a large, well-maintained army consisting of brave soldiers that are capable of defending it and its interests. For NCR citizens, they deserve nothing less. So right now we're going down conventional warfare. Uh, we'll see what happens. More special forces cap. Uh, Ranger leads. Ranger can openers. Uh, Seth's Rangers. Power armor. Ooh. I kind of want to wait to go down here just because I don't know which way we want to go. Our research speed goes up, better production costs. Oliver's pet project. But we will see. Also, we're using Oral Blues, Oral Blues Radio, Oral Blues Generic Decisions Revamped, Oral Blues Tech Expansion. Um, that might be it. Oral Blues for the little guys, just to give all the, the other trees here something to do as well. Into the bear's roar. Farm department's nice. Stonks. Very nice. Oh, look, there's a legion here. Well, we'll probably need to do the divide and the rapids and whatnot, too. And multiple crises, huh? Not ideal. But whatever. We'll deal with it when it get, gets here. So, Brigadier General Thompson. Maybe melee hacker. You know, smack him and beat the crap out of them. Um. Reinforce rate, smooth talker. Bear drawer. Actually, do we have any other decisions we could do? Help settlements. We could. I don't mind increasing propaganda, though. Already. We're gonna restore a lot of stuff. Let's get settlements for now. And we'll do that soon next. The Shady Sands Power Plant. Shady Sands Power Plant takes back to Aerodash, but it's time for an upgrade. You can always rely on Hoover Dam after all. Boss is Emporium Expansion. Despite its small beginnings, Buster's Emporium has grown from a humble tent to a mighty manufactory. They'll gladly contract with us. The way that we walk. Aridesh was not just the first president of the Republic, he was also a strong believer in the teachings of Donimo. Donimo was one of the great teachers before the war. A prophecy that mankind's greed and folly would lead to death and destruction. Only by following the Four Noble Truths in an eightfold path could mankind avoid the endless horror of unchanging war. Understandably, the faith, mocked as a California cult before the war, flourished in its aftermath. Dharma's presence isn't as flashy as a ranger outpost or a crimson care station, but the faith makes it a presence known throughout soup kitchens, hospitals, and its ties to the followers. Our signal candle can light thousands, and the light is not decreased by being shared. Conquer anger with love and lies with truth. Good. Go ahead and do this one too. That's why I want to get the other one too to start expanding army training. Great, because uh military theorists. Not bad. Well look, what oh the old Brahmin Rodin. Or a bold Brahmin pen dragon. A veteran ranger recognizes his days in combat are long over. We can pull him from his administrative position in the Mojave Territory as they assist in the training of our troops. George Jefferson. Ooh. I was just following orders. Responsible for the murder of many housesteads and tribes that got too close to Navarro. Jefferson found his knowledge of caches of T-51B and an excellent bargaining chip for a light assistance. He now happily spends his days in a power armor program watched by armed guards. Mr. Fantastic. 300. Remove Having earned a theoretical degree in physics, there are few people in the Wasteland more qualified for management of Helios I than Mr. Fantastic. But, uh, gang violence blooms in the hub. The hub, in some ways, is the epitome of the Hunt CR's contrast. Home to the Thieves Guild in Underground. It's home to the, some of the richest merchants in the West. Recent economic development has attracted thousands of citizens to the city, lured the promise of a bright tomorrow. <clears throat> but not everyone gets a seed, unfortunately. The numerous gangs present in the city have taken. Advantage of those who fall into the cracks and have continued growing power, resulting in steadily increasing violence, with our economic capital embroiled in petty crime, creating income has fallen drastically. We could wait for the hub's municipal forces to resolve the violence themselves or undertake a federal military and fiscal intervention. After all, investing in investing the hub could be a long term benefit of the Republic. Gover government intervention, huh? A new branch of our focus tree, beginning with a focus until it sends troopers into the hub, will become available for us to pursue. But the answer to the economy will require 5% more consumer goods. Such as the price of progress. We're going in. Deploy federal troopers to the hub. We've only ever enjoyed a loose grip of our southern trade cities, and the dominance of local trade groups has become blatantly obvious as violence is erupted between hostile smuggling gangs 
In the hub, if we don't intervene soon, we risk a bloodbath and chaos in the Navarro territories. The Battle of the Bodega. The sleepy ta she town of Futsang near the side of Old Bodega is still one of the handful that adopt the coast of Navarro. Though well, well there until 12 o'clock, 11th of April, 2275. On that fateful day, she insurgents attacked her tax collectors trespassing on hard-won soil. Can we stand for this? No, of course not. We'll go to war. How else can we protect our citizens? To defend our people, whatever the cost may be. Oh, the peace of Navarro has been broken, and the Northwest California is consumed by sporadic firefights once again. While well, President Campbell is quick to blame the newly erupted crisis on the Xi, some are not so sure. Chief among them is all good, who spent months negotiating a peace. He isn't happy. And chaos in the Navarro territories. Northeast of California burns today as a skirmish between the Van Graaff mercenaries and the Xi settlers in the coastal city of Fusang left 21 dead. Orders collapsed in the NCR's Navarro territories. Settlers aligned with the Xi in the travels of the region have both taken up arms against the local garrison, successfully taking control of this east and south of the frontier territory in what has been dubbed the Navarro Crisis. As the Xi, NCR, and Eureka fiercely debate intervention, open war for Navarro is expected to commence, an event which will pose a serious threat to diplomatic relations between the three factions no matter the outcome. We must protect our territory, and all good's fury. Had idea? I had no idea that things were so good, Murphy cried in the halls of Congress, that we once again face a war. Van Graffs and Barons of Navarro trample the rights of tribals. They store crops from settlers from the Xi, and they smuggle guns and drugs to Oregon. Now you ask the NCR soldiers to fight and die for them? Kimball waited for the cries that died down and slammed a fist on the podium. Spare me your moral condensation, Murphy. As far as I can see, it is only the Republic that takes risks for humanity. It's our rangers that crack down cannibalism in Navarro, or merchants who sold the Xi their farming tools, and our settlers that tame the mighty forests of the North. Some of the men fight for nothing more than the flag in their own interest, but we stand by the people of Navarro and the Republic, the one society that goes out armed for right and for freedom. I will not surrender our hardwood land so you can feel smug at home. To the public, the home of freedom. Senator Olga Murphy of the Boneyard has called for a vote of no confidence in President Kimball, raising the possibility of Kimball's removal for office before the end of his term. To survive the vote, President Kimball will need to secure the support of a majority of the senators, and vice versa. Once we've chosen a side through our national focuses, the other side will also begin to take measures against us. We should stay on our toes. A free people should not take orders from others. Oh, crap. Uh, I don't know. Unite them. Corruption. Northern Shield. Brother Diplomacy. Better World. Propose a Rural Revitalization Act. Begin waking the slumbering giant. Land Reform. State of the Disunion. Anton Flynn's Address. Unite them. So that is whose? New Hand on the Tiller. Or we go with his Vindication. Rapid Expansion. Southern Fleet. Inaugural Address. Support President Kimball. Ah, uh, so it's up here. Really. Stoke militarism. Hmm. Downplay Baja failures. Celebrate Mojave successes. So, what is this? Electoral deadlock. So, I gotta figure it out to get to that point. I'm not sure which one is one. Mayor Hayes' proposal. He's not a member of Congress, but listening to him will boost his support in the presidential election. Judicial reform. Broken barons, free trade. Huh. Or Senator Algood Murphy. So less war support, more stability. Focus on the on the Navarro. Rally support from the Boneyard. Provide concrete evidence. Well, we're gonna go with this one for now. We should support President Kimball and the incumbent in the struggle for power. Sure, he might bend the rules sometime. And possibly accept, accept slightly too many bribes, but his war hawk stance is to keep the Republic safe. Yeah. <clears throat> mm, let's go with free market contracts. What well, is Murphy calls corruption is merely a recognition of the fact that a big business can provide the best services to the Republic. Why should we pay more for rations just because they come from a small farmer? To who support? Let's offer to, uh, to make all bids for government contracts available to the lowest bidder. This will win his friends and save money and stoke militarism. 
Perhaps the greatest advantage of all goods campaign is a gulf in opinion of war. Well, far from a pacifist, all goods ties to various peace treaties make him weak to militaristic rhetoric. Let's stoke it. So, can I send stuff to him? Get optimized training, but we probably don't need that. Oh. Will the Senate impeach President Kimball over the Navarro crisis, or will they spurn Governor Murphy's debate? An ongoing series of speeches, Senator Murphy seeking to appoint our pro-military rhetoric as authoritarian and against what the Republic stands for, the fool. All good exposes blatant corruption. Murphy who harassed our product supporters in the name of exposing corruption. Fears that Algo will bring light on the reasonable, legitimate businesses, which some of the mob dislike in order to gain support. Clearly, as a master, the making allies part of his vote of no confidence. Countering the vote of no confidence. The NCR Senate moves slowly, and it's a little surprise it's going to take a significant period of time until they can debate. Algo and Murphy's motion of no confidence. Still, maybe it's for the best. Both candidates still have plenty of time to campaign. Nine. Wow, okay, that's quite a few. Um, that's good. Send him in. What do we have here? Alice McLafferty. She knows how to do business and do it well. She can satisfy the popular demand for consumerism so long as she's given lucrative government contracts. You can replace her with the advisor if you really want. Can't fire her. Tiret Mama Van Graaff. Once now outlaws of California, the Van Graaffs are now model citizens. Although they may be a little rough around the edges, they understand that their best, perhaps only, market is the Republic. To victory. No, I still want to get rid of Jackson for now. We need Army XP. Yeah, they're going to fall apart without our support. The same steps is Navarro Probe. Burned to action uh, by a swell of public outrage for following the Navarro War. A bipartisan group of senators have demanded the opening of a Senate inquiry into the events that unfolded. The Senate has, of course, compiled comply with the demand, and now probe dominated by all good supporters has begun digging for evidence that the attack was spurred by the lax Republic expansionism. We must shut down the slander and remind the people that the Sheen Brotherhood started this. Let's find a way to shut it down. Let's see a place to shut it down, but whatever. At least we're here. You need a general, though. You know, you can be a general for now. Um, just go and just go to the front line. It's fine. What a mess. But it's California. What do you expect? Hmm. What am I making a circumvent impossible? Can you actually win here? Potentially, maybe? No? Okay. Good. This theater needs supplies the most and fastest. You're still getting attacked, which is fine, whatever. Mandatory service is not really going to be needed for us, but whatever, I grabbed it anyways. Boom. Humble request, an envoy from the Shi has arrived with a request. Funding for their endeavors. And surprised many, seldom few opportunities have arisen where we'd push brush past with the Shi. No, they have one of their own approach us. Rumors and stories speak of a technological prowess, a force to be reckoned with, that they have bothered step beyond the palace and of the mystical, mystical veins, or vines, that seemingly cleanse the air. These legacies strike interest in the many inferior in others. Perhaps she can make greater friends and foes? Fortune favors the generous. We can invest, or advertise, consumer goods. Uh, optimize training, country management. For now, it's fine. Um, I guess... We should do the most expensive. Scavenge first solar stop pause. If you heard about this, please go ahead. Boop! Alright. See what you can do here. Just militia? Very nice, very nice. Good. And you should be there. Good. Go in. Have fun with them. Oh, they've even got a special forces division in circle two. Fantastic. And it's gone. Nice. 
<clears throat> Holding a boat, no confidence. Well, let's do everything that we need to quickly, faster. Um, shut down the Navarro probe. Set up by a group of senators loyal to all good. The Navarro probe is a scathing report on NCR imperialism. It's all threatens our, threatens our expansion in the Mojave. I've allowed to continue. I risk completely blowing the campaign out of the water. There you go. Nice job, guys. What's next? Only militia. It's good for uh, expansion. Oh, no man to spare. Bull, maybe bear. I hope. Well, I definitely prefer the bear over the bull. Well, depending on what we're talking about. Like in the Legion or stock market. Stock market, we would definitely prefer uh, the bull. You're not going anywhere, son. Please, come on. Oh, you actually cut him off up here, too. Nice job. Uh, no one to throw up there, but whatever. The faster you kill them, the better. Um, place in hegemony. Not good. All American badass. Oh, well, that's pretty good. General, general wait and see. Uh, call to the army. Well, that's not bad. Mossman's army. That's okay. Uh, economic advisor. Bastion of democracy. Eh. Gunner's deal. Three local mines. Mm. Cultural advisor. Why not? Uh, old world blues, lose political power. Hmm. Aircraft. Aircraft it is. Oh, they power more too, look at that. Shoot down the Navarro probe. Downplay Baja failures. More than fair to say the performance of the federal troopers in and around Bob and poor. But how come everyone forgets the heroes of the Rangers? Look at all they've done for the Republic. Just in case. Go on base somewhere. Things got looking ultra weak. I like it. Now that's just normal infantry, which is not ideal, but whatever. If we could get special, uh, not special forces, but sophisticated vehicle tech, we'd probably go down motorized, because I usually don't go down motorized, but we don't. And it's focus free, unfortunately, so we'll get rid of the motors eventually, probably. Nice. Nice. Drills. Very nice, very nice, very nice. I'm also getting laser speed on my app, too. Honestly, it's cool. See where the divisions are at, see what we can do around here. Oh, they're moving in. I guess we're moving too. Contracts. Where are we with this stuff? Oh, looking pretty good so far. Oh. Also, we're on the historical. I didn't tell you that at the very beginning, but we're on the historical. Victor Navarro. The Shia brother in the tribes did all their best to crush our NCR, but now we are firmly ensconched in Navarro territory. We have proven once again that the bear never gives up its territory. Moreover, the conflict gave us the opportunity to cement the Republic's control over the region, strengthening our army. A victory for democracy for the Republic. Oh, we just straight up annexed them. And we get, get cores. How about that? Fantastic. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, just become troopers now. Out of France's forms of San Francisco chapter. Order has been restored. Following the withdrawal or destruction of the remaining opponents, the new California Republic has once again emerged as undisputed control of the Navarro frontier. The culmination of the campaign, to regain control of Northwest California after fighting broke out between the settlers aligned with the Shi, NCR Garrison, and the native tribes of the region, the NCR once again faces the task of retaining California's last frontier. Uh, <clears throat> the bear, supported by a number of Brahmin barons, has quickly taken steps to integrate the Navarro territory into the NCR proper, bringing in a new swath of settlers eager to extract the land's rich lumber and crops. For now, it seems NCR is in Navarro to stay. Order, of course, has been restored. 
Oh, the friends from San Francisco chapter last night. We may need to begin drawing up plan invasion plans. Hmm. Peculiar. Eh? Quite peculiar. But when we get down there, you know, just in case, go 15, it's fine. For occupied territories, race and pacification. I'm actually building up some more ships. Nice. Oh, you guys are back good. Commander, but whatever. <clears throat> Celebrate the Mojave success. Oh, we need stock stuff stock about, huh? Oh, we don't have enough money now. We need point zero eight more money. God dang it. So what do we do about this? Mayor Hayes' proposal, while Murphy Kibble fight over the Nevada territories, Hayes uses their, uses their distraction to expand radio, railroads across the heart of the NCR. I'm just going to screw with everybody. Let's just do it anyways. Screw it. There goes Los. Hey, right, some coffee here too. Got a little caffeine. You know, Cowboy Country's looking pretty good against the Tohono Nation. Legion. Super unique Vipers, Eastport, Fault City, Texas Brotherhood, Lone Stars killing themselves, pretty good. Uh, multi plus equipment, very nice. Oh, pick that one, this guy's one too. Nice. We have like no war support though. But rationalism and uh, building knowledge to work. The followers have long been the forefront of the NCR's education system, but it's time for a change. The public needs to put its knowledge to work to make the world a better place. No longer will progress depend on a hand of charity, no longer shall a society of equals hew to a thousand different goals. At Hayes' urging, Campbell and Congress have passed the California Restoration Act to form the Office of Science and Industry, an agency dedicated to toward scientific advancement. With proper funding, the Republic will continue to walk forward into a better future, to proactive thought. Judicial reforms. The NCR once promised access to all its courts, but in recent years, judges have become the puppets of entrenched interests across the nation. Hayes will expand the courts and appoint them directly through Congress, ensuring every citizen can exercise their rights. Tribute to the gods. Tribute to the gods. Peace out, pee pee. Uh, sure, for now. This is another city. It's not a big deal, but whatever. Bushfire Wars. Looks like we'll be doing okay. Universal schooling, huh? That would be bad. That would probably be really good to get, but whatever. Seven days left. Eight days good. So we can get that one done. Which is nice. Good. Guns. What do we need the guns for again? I don't remember. It's been our training. Yeah, I definitely do that one. And. Kimball retains confidence in President Kimball. President Kimball's forceful defense of the Republic carried the day, given the threats arrayed by, against California. Only a firm hand can guide the Republic, and Kimball's victory will remind all not to tread on the bear. President Kimball's agenda is vindicated. Algon Murphy will resign from the Senate in the protest of his decision, retiring to a private life in a small farm set outside the boneyard. Despite the credible challenge to his leadership from Algon Murphy, President Kimball has managed to retain the Senate's support and keep his job. His policies have vindicated, and so now he can turn to face the 2278 election. Ain't no business like sheep business. Bears Paul. Bears Honeypot. Crushing the Rising Dragon. Or sending the Rangers. Morgul just straight up for them. The Wise Dragon. Water Merchants. Remove Chaos in the Hub. Let's do that first, maybe, see what happens. Empire of Liberty. 
Authorized raids on gang headquarters. Federal troopers on the streets of the hub may have been able to quell some of the more violent gang clashes, but while the leadership of each gang remains operational, won't be able to properly quench the conflict. Let's eliminate them. What's over here? Mojave. Oh, the Mojave Fair. Um, this stuff is not bad over here, too. Old War armor, huh? Artillery ammunition. That's pretty good. Ooh, this would be good, too. Big Jim's army. Jim's drills. The Air Force Captain Maria. Want to know the bright side of being able? Look at that. Uh, oh, um, sure for now. Uh, being able to take flight anytime I need to. It's a tie between the view and all the parts working together beautifully to, defy, to defy gravity. Originally having lived near the ruins of a pre-war military base, Maria Perez was selected to train the Republic's newly born Air Corps. Over time, this has become a very useful Air Force, as if, if never as large as she'd like. Uh, war sport would be nice. We need more war sport. As much like political power, go war sport. Chief of the Navy, Naval Export Performer. That's our auxiliaries. We're working nice. Uh, for now, that's fine. Royal can have an aggression pact. Uh, let's get all this stuff done, too. Good. Diversify weapons. Cash expenses, that'd be nice. Heavy troopers? Shock troopers. Awakening the giant. Stri spear tip ta tactics. Remind Royal. Secrets of Navarro. We'll support Kimball's election due to this. Cartels all on all or on Encored states. Ruthless capitalists get good business sense. Stockton promises. Huh. Rapid expansion. So distracted were we by other avenues for expansion, we ignore the raiders and troubles that lie on the southern Cal Colorado's banks. It is time to rectify that. But let's do Big Jim's army. Big Jim is not a particularly complicated man when it comes to tactic. He values bravery and loyalty in his troops above any particular strategy or methodology. In many ways, this makes Big Jim's army overwhelmingly inflexible, but at the end of the day, the introduction of simple drills once taught to him by the Desert Rangers should allow the NCR's average soldier to rise to new heights. Money do we have? Not enough. It's fine. For now, you can leave these guys too. We'll get you some experience. Democracy. More political power. Stability. Yeah, that's pretty slim here. Oof. We have spec ops or power armor fire teams. That's a bit weird, but okay. For the divide, eastward, ho, oh. crimson caravan routes, rapid settlement, Colorado fleet. Nice. For now, you can lead it. It's fine. We already got that one person to help us out with our plane, so nothing. Turn it. Get them vehicles out there. Rapid expansion. So then we'll go to war, and then we'll go to unite them. The divide's a prosperous community along the trade routes to the Mojave, but if we wish to truly protect the region, we should occupy it directly. 
and rapid settlement after that. Many of our veterans would be glad to settle farms along the Colorado. It really raises the question why we didn't occupy it earlier. Shady Sands Power Plant, Big Gym, Industry Drills, Gym Drills. Unite them. Poor Rapids. I can't wait to not play them because they just die. Aaron Beaumont. Nice. Good person of defense. Very nice. Oh, very good choice. Sure. Why not? Of course, send one infantry division to go down there and do that. Bay at Master Landing. Very nice. Very good. Goodbye. Boop. Los Algodones. Also take over Petro Chico. Since these guys show up, this pretty much war is almost over. Yeah. Thank you. Figured as much. Good job, guys. To the divide. You guys need to smash really hard. Just fine with us. Oh. Mass communications, huh? Research speed. Can I send you volunteers? No, we can't. Unite them. Unwrap settlement. Yeah, that'd be good. Hey, Siege of Hidden Valley. Huh? No longer get effective from the abandonment of the gold standard. That's good. Immediately start attacking us, which is nice. And then what after this? Nothing down there. So 2076. Pretty good. Um, Colorado's fleet. We can wait that. No business like she business. The year of the she of mighty people who seek to explore the stars, develop new power armor and fuel sources, and build their own vertebrates. Honestly, maybe we should have annexed them instead of focusing on the Mojave, but there's time to rectify that. Sure, you guys can all come in. Except for you Mojave territories. Now the infantry lead this time. And I don't want us to do all that stuff over there. That's fine. Boop. Better special forces take the hits. It's fine. Whatever. Boop. Any more like normal generals. Good. Let them struggle, it's fine. City. It's very nice. Nice. Trish from Hawaii, War Sport. I think we'll take the War Sport. Thank you. Come again. Good. And good. Alright. So let's, let's see. So we got rid of them. We got rid of them. We gotta come down here to the Vale of the Benditos next, probably. Um, I always forget about this side. You know, for now, just join this side here. 20 divisions is probably too much, but whatever. Unless we go to War of the She next. We have a new hand on the tiller. Oh, we can't do that way. Bear's paw. I won't forget that now in San Francisco. San Francisco and the Shi are an oddity somehow. This prosperous port and city surrounded by the Republic influence is often neglected as we focus on the New Vegas. Indeed, one could walk the streets of houses with a little treasure and never hear of it. But the center of scientific engineering, home to a prosperous warrior people, and also fortunate for us, divided and exploitable kung fu schools. Whatever our decision about the city, we make sure it's guided by the wayside's greatest nation. You know, the tech would have been really useful at Hoover Dam. Bears Paul. 
there's any pot. Yeah. Um, cast expenses, it's not bad. Power armor. Should you go to war with the Legion, the answer will gain several new wartime response decisions. Friends in Reno. Hubs investments. Old world base. Promises of strength and security. Empire of Liberty. We shall add to the California Union a barrier against a dangerous extension of the Legion and add to the Empire of Liberty an extensive fertile country, thereby converting dangerous enemies to valuable friends. No, oh, Gramsci Hayes, huh? Further, Lost Souls will hate you for challenging the Monopoly and Toasters and advanced energy weapons, but mostly Toasters. Hmm. Oh, the Mojave Affair. The conflict with the Mojave has long been a drain on the Republic's manpower and equipment. Ooh. Uh, the land between the Long 15 and New Vegas is largely useless, but plagued by raiders and legionary scouts. We need help out our expedition to the region if they are to be successfully pacify the area. But how much are we willing to commit? Where's everything about? So we'll do that one, and then we're going to do... Oh, that's the Baja campaign. Ah, yeah, we're going to do Empire of Liberty next. Baja Blues. Uh, that would be nice to do, but we don't have to do this immediately yet. That's your efforts to settle Southern California's Baja were hampered 20 years ago when a settlement found itself ill prepared to fight against the innumerable Mexican cartels in the region. Whether their desires to attain the South or Ignite will undoubtedly bring civilization to this lawless region. But the question is who will lead the charge back into Baja? Then, Wendell Peterson's War. In May of 2253, a gang of raiders attacked a large uh, trade convoy outside Nipton. Despite a heroic defense by the caravan's guards, all 38 members of the convoy were massacred, and their extensive supplies of food, water, and weapons looted. Joanna Tibbet, the tiny successor of the presidency, was subsequently removed from power by the Senate over a refusal to commit troops to secure the Mojave. Oh boy. Her replacement, Wendell Peterson, proved more pliable to the Senate's bullish rhetoric, ordering the three battalions of troopers into the Mojave under the command of the General Aaron Kimball in October. For the following decade, Kimball made a name for himself as a principal architect of the pacification of the Mojave, and under his leadership, the NCR captured much of its current holdings. Shortly after Kimball's departure from the Mojave in 2073, Ranger Scouts made two shocking discoveries, the intact Hoover Dam and a mostly undamaged Las Vegas. Now President Kimball ordered the dam conquered as his first act of Congress, or first act of office in 2274, and the subsequent Treaty of New Vegas endeavored peace with Mr. House. However, these successes quickly evaporated as supply and logistic issues plagued the region, and casualties ever increased in what was initially pledged as a quick and easy campaign. Now we stand at an impasse. Without help, the expedition sure to collapse from exhaustion, but we can only spare so much. A conundrum, some will say. Expand officer training. Um, we could. We're gonna wait for that one though. We're gonna wait for this one too. Smoke signals. We got more than enough money right now. Ooh. Or political power, I should say. Passion democracy. Well, oh, naval designer. That's fine. And what? Green chop shop. Capture this person. Hmm. Well, you know what? I'm gonna wait until we get up here because I definitely want those people too. Empire of Liberty, and the Baja Blues. They found something, huh? That's good. Conquest of Baja. For too long, Baja's raiders menaced people in their way of life. We must teach them to make love, not war. Or at least, peace, not war. Let's be realistic. You know what? Expeditionary research. If we're able to win the victories in California's many frontier regions, we must prepare to share our cutting-edge technological progress with our local commanders. A better way to do than under Air Dash the program. Air Dash program. Most of Mojave deployments, the Mojave campaign is and always has been severely underfunded and understaffed. Sadly, we're in no position to redeploy forces from our other fronts at the moment, but we might be able to spare a silver or sliver of our untrained reserves. Yeah, why not? Look at all this research we're getting done. Fantastic. Peace over war, improved country management, sure. Uh, oh, thinking metal, why not? Go to signals, very nice, very nice, good, 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 good. Resource efficiency gain, whatnot. What am I another research slot though? Let's see our economy. How much money do we have left now? Not much. Oh wow, look at that. So much army XP. Love it. Um, capture the war. Well, actually, I'm gonna come over here maybe. Rangers lead the way. I like that one a lot. Military council is not bad. Hmm. 
Selected officer strategy know-how. Logistics. I brought it in, I guess. Strategy know-how. Old books hold knowledge from many battles throughout history. We can put this wisdom to good use against our enemies. Yeah, definitely. Definitely want rangers to lead the way. The Baja Blues. In the year 2256, the NCR colony of Rattletail was established in the northern portion of Baja, California. These brave pioneers received formal NCR funding, but little military protection, a choice which would prove fatal. The young colonists tried to develop the region's water supply, but Mexico's fearsome raiders tried to take their hard-won gains. The cartels retaliated against a small settlement and launched two major river assaults against a township, both of which were stopped with relative ease. It was the intervention and wisdom of a young ranger named Hamlet. The end of the dispute before the toll of the conflict became notable. The man crafted a clever lie, spouting nonsense about an army of raiders that would soon come and wipe the town away. The colonists evacuated, the locals regained their water supply, and the greater conflict was avoided. Unfortunately, this lie had an unintended result, but now Aaron Kimball faces pressure to go south and find new lands for the bear to trot upon. Ranger Mossman goes with Kimball's support. Rangers lead the way. Kimball earned support from Dago for cracking down on raiders. Hector Santango. Sant Angel, a local follower. Welcome to his liberators. Mir Hayes with organized development. Mm, I don't know. You know, I'm going to figure out which one we want. I mean, it's not a big deal. But I want to see which way we can go. Hayes is going to be bad. Kimball won't be bad. But I think I'll end it there. If you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. As we continue on once again with the NCR's journey. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.